Hey, here's our wood lathes. Uh, we are very lucky to have some very nice wood lathes. Um, they're very expensive. This one's four thousand dollars, and then we have our small pen lathes. So I really want you to take good care of them. Um, they are pretty easy to, um, you know, kind of beat up a little bit. So we kind of want to really respect them. Um, so I want to go through the lathe safety, and uh, then I want to show you how to mount the piece and operate it. Uh, one thing that we need to uh, be aware of is um, you have a moving spindle right here. That's my biggest concern on the lathe is really um, somebody getting their, their hair caught in it. And um, that's something that I really um, am concerned with, their hair or any loose clothing or anything that we can get caught in here. The guards always needs to be used. Okay, The guard is here for a reason. Um, it needs to be used anytime the machine's running. The smaller pen lathes don't have a guard. They don't run at the RPMs. You don't have as big a project on them. Um, but this bit, these bigger lays, we're always going to use the guard. To lift the guard up though, to, to put your piece on, you're just going to pull this pin back here and then it will go up. Okay. Um, the other thing I worry about the, the lathe is sometimes students get distracted on it. Um, they get to a point where um, you know, they kind of lose, lose a little bit of focus and um, you know, that's where accidents happen. And I always think of this uh, situation, there was a gentleman carving out the inside of a bowl and it was back when the lathes were on the other side of the shop, so they're in a little better position now where it's not as easy to get distracted. But that's with any tool. Um, you always got to really be focused on what you're doing. But um, he was carving on a bowl, and um, he was carving out the inside, and uh, basically he comes up to me, and he, his knuckle is really swollen. And he's like, this doesn't look right, does it? I'm like, no, it doesn't. And he had um, basically, they didn't do anything for him, he uh, dislocated the cartilage of his knuckle. But it caused a lot of swelling and I was really concerned for him at first. And um, so we looked on the videos to see what he was doing. You know, I was like, well, what did you do? You know, and he couldn't really tell me what he did. He didn't, he didn't know what happened really. Um, and so I'm watching him on the video and he's carving away on his bowl. And then he, he's watching a, a young lady. Um, he was, he was watches her go by and then he takes his, his eyes right off the machine and that's when the, the tool catches and when he gets hurt. So I don't think that injury would have happened at all if he wouldn't have took his um, eyes off what he was doing. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, you're going to have to isolate yourself to, to what you're doing and um, really pay attention. And he was enjoying his work. He just um, let himself get distracted. So. We have our power switches. We have two in this machine. So we have one up here. This is the main power. And then we have one down here that is um, for, um, you know, this is also a main power, but this one you can move around. It's got a magnet, so you can move it to a safer location to where you can turn it off really quick if you want to. Okay, we use this switch because this switch is, we've replaced several of these, and they only cost us about $5 a piece to, to, switch, to, to replace. This one up here is about $25 to, to replace. So... I want you to use this one. You leave the main power on, and then while you're working, you can use this one, and you can turn this one on and off as you need it. Okay, so let's try to use this power switch. And you can move it close to your workpiece, so that way you can turn it off quick if you need to. And that's why it has a long cord on it, so you can work way down here, and it's a nice feature. Okay, um, these lathes have a reverse and forward. The little pen lathes do not, but these do. So you have to kind of pay attention to what, what that means. And you might even want me to double check it. Normally it's going to be on forward, so you want it to spin towards you. Okay, if it's on reverse, it'll spin away from you, and you might use that for carving something out, like a bowl on the inside. But for the most part, you're going to keep it on forward. Here's our variable speed. We can control the different speeds this thing goes at, so that's really neat to do. Um, we're lucky to have that feature. So on your, your rough turning, when you first start off, you'll go at a lower speed and then you'll creep up to bigger speeds. We can adjust pulleys in here to um, increase, change the gear ratios. So right here is our spindle. This is our headstock. This is where the power comes from. So inside uh, the headstock we have a spur. This is what grabs the piece of work. We can also screw something on here called a faceplate for different operations. So in order to get this off, I have to use this, um, and this will help me get it off. This is kept in the red toolbox with the other lathe tools, and now here's the spur. So here's a closer look at the spur. You want to make sure your spur has your, your tip on it, and you want to make sure these grabber points are in good shape. Over here is the, head, the tail stock. This is the one that's actually more confusing for students. 
and I'm going to bring in the camera so you can see. Um... All right, so here's above view of this tailstock, and this is where students get confused. There's a lever here, there's a lever here, and then there is a, uh, a wheel here. So these are the three things we need to be concerned about. Okay, this lever back here makes major adjustments. So I can slide this whole tailstock around um, by using this bigger lever. And this is the one that locks it. This small lever right here, you can loosen and then you can spin this. Uh, this will help turn the spindle in or out. Okay, so this is the live center. This, this guy has a ball bearing on it and that's what moves. But this right here is what locks it. So as you're turning, it won't loosen up and come back. So this is a basically a lock. It's a spindle lock. So the bad thing is, is let's say this is locked, and then I come over here, and I'm like, I'm going to crank on this. You do damage to the part. So what I need you to do is loosen this when you're making your adjustments. So then it spins real easy. So it's like anything else in here. If it's not spinning real easy, there's usually a lock on it or some type of... Um, you know situation that you're not doing quite right now watch this if I back this all the way in it pops this out so this pops out if I back that all the way in so it's actually important that when I'm working with this that this is out uh, the tailstock spindles out a little bit so that way the live center locks in place okay the next big um, piece that we have to be concerned about is the tool rest okay here is the tool rest right here um, one thing that concerns me is these locks right here, it's a double lock, they do the same thing. If I loosen this and then this comes down, it can pinch my finger right here. All right, I've had a couple students get pinched right here and it gives them a blood blister. They don't have to go to the hospital or anything, but it's very unpleasant. This is kind of heavy, so you can kind of see how that would hurt. This right here, you can loosen this and you can slide this around on the bed. This is called a lathe bed. I can move this around. Um, to where I need it to be. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to mount, uh, prepare your stock for the lathe. In here, whenever we do a lathe project, you're going to check with me and get approval first, okay? We don't make um, silly little spindles that don't have a purpose. We make stuff in here that um, has function that we're going to use that is worth something. So I'm going to take my rubber mallet and I'm going to tap it real lightly into the block of wood to that way I have a, a nice grabber. If I use a hammer it's going to mushroom these this out and then it won't fit back to where it needs to go. So I really appreciate it if you would find a mallet and use a mallet to, to um, lock this in place. So now I'm going to put the, the workpiece in and I'm going to move the spindle from the tailstock in place and then I, I'm going to a lock it everything in place and now I'm going to move my my tool rest nice and close to the workpiece and I want to get it about as close as it can without touching it okay and then I kind of center it and you want it so your tool is about uh, midway midpoint uh, of where you're going to be so when I put my tool up here it's about midpoint now check this out this thing has an angle to it so that's about the angle my tool needs to be, okay? So if I'm way over here like this, this is how I see a lot of students will start carving like this. This isn't the right angle at all, and it tends to grab the, the workpiece or your tool and pull it in a little bit. Both hands need to be on my chisel. And see this lip right here? This is where your hand needs to be. And I know some people are like, well, that seems kind of close to the workpiece. And I agree, it is kind of close to the workpiece. So you have to be paying attention to what's going on. But when I have both hands back here, I have no depth control. And that's almost more dangerous because if my tool catches, it can flip the tool up and hit me in the chin. So when I have my hand right here, it gives me control of the workpiece. And that's very important that I have control over the workpiece. Okay, so you can do this left-handed or right-handed or however you want to do it. But I like to have this, I, I prefer to have my hand underneath and I ride my knuckle on there for control. And I'm not pushing very hard, okay? Remember, I'm just kind of going real easy. So, turn something larger, we'll probably uh, knock the corners off on the table saw or the band saw first, so that way you don't have as much stuff to remove. This needs to be removed for sanding. So, when it's time to sand my workpiece, I'm going to remove the tool rest. 
Um, and I'm going to stand, I'm not going to wrap the sandpaper around my hands, I'm just going to hold on to it so that way it doesn't get caught in there and I have a problem. So this is a tail rest, or tail stock. So here's my tail stock, alright, this is my spindle lock right here. That's my spindle adjustment for uh, minor adjustments. My major adjustment for my tail stock is behind it. Over here I have my head stock, I have my variable speed, I have my power switch, my main power, I have my secondary power switch. Here's my RPMs, how fast it's going. So those are some of the main components. Then we have our lathe bed. So these are the main things about the lathe. <clears throat> my biggest concern is people's hair getting into it. Um, they're getting their fingers too close or getting caught in there. Those are my biggest concerns. We have a very good um, safety record on the lathe overall. And um, let's keep it that way. This feature right here is our spindle lock. So if I need to screw something onto these threads, I might lock the spindle and then you kind of turn this screw to where it holds in place. Now I do worry about that because when the spindle is locked, if you turn it on, um, it trips a breaker in there and it's not really good on the machine. So make sure if you lock the spindle, that as soon as you're done, you unlock it so that way it goes freely. And never push on the spindle when it's moving because you're basically trying to stop it when it's moving and it's hard on the machine as well. So we need to treat these things great so they keep holding up excellent. Okay, here's our smaller lathes, and it's almost more confusing to uh, learn how to adjust the tailstock. So, here's our tailstock again, and um, this is my major adjustment. So, I'm gonna once I lock this down, I'm not gonna be able to move this anymore on the lathe bed. So then I can um, rotate this in and out. Okay, long as this isn't locked, and right now it's locked. So I need to make sure this is loose, and then I can rotate this in and out. So when I twist this, it will go in and out where it needs to be. Now, we have a groove in here, and you can probably can't quite see it from here, but there's a groove in the back part of this, and it needs to line up with that lock, because that's where it locks into that groove. So if, it, if this twists, you need to make the groove go to the outside. Anyway, so I make sure that's loose, and I can adjust this to where it needs to be. And then when I get it to where it needs to be, I just lock it. So then everything's locked. Um, some of my bigger concerns again are still things getting caught in it. Uh, people not having the workpiece mounted right. We had a couple things bounce up and um, just because they didn't have it mounted right. Um, same thing with the tool rest, pinching their, pinching their finger while sanding. So this needs to be removed during sanding. So here's our variable speed button down here, our power switch. Sometimes you might have to reset it, there's a reset button. Here's a spindle lock right here. So this little black knob, you push it in and that locks the spindle so you can remove this. Uh, the mandrel, the pen mandrel, that's how you move it. The bigger lathes have a spindle lock too. Um, make sure that it rotates freely, you know, before you start it. And that's about it. They're pretty great tools, uh, not a lot of major differences other than the size, and they don't have the digital readout, so that should 